Okay, so let's get started. Here you see I'm just removing this comp old composite from this uh, extracted mounted tooth. And tip number one is use a rubber dam. Isolate, make sure you don't have any saliva or any other junk, hemostasis, getting onto that preparation after you've etched and bonded because that's gonna decrease your outcome and decrease your results. Tip number two. Use a round tip burr. Like this is a 330 that's pre-sterilized in a package. You don't have to reprocess it. Most of us were taught using some sort of square angled burr like this 557. And during dental school, we were taught to have perfectly sharp line angles. Well, I see nothing but cracked teeth day in, day out. And I truly believe that using that type of sharp line angle is gonna cause the increase in cracked teeth. So use a round shape burr. Tip number three, pre-wedge to get a better contact. And even better yet, I'll take you to the next level, is if you can find these little defender things, which not only, this is a, the company from Garrison, and they have these little um, little protectors, these little shields with a wedge in them. And this little wedge uh, with this little defender makes allows you to go even faster during your preparation because it prevents, it decreases the probability of causing damage to the adjacent tooth. So the problem with composites is that when they you polymerize them, they shrink. So increasing your pre-wedging time may help you get a better contact. Tip number four, use a sharp instrument to scratch old composite and you'll get a black line usually on the old composite and that'll be able to tell you if it's composite or tooth structure. Tip number five, Make sure the gingival contact is broken. There is nothing more frustrating in life than trying to jam down a sectional matrix or Toffelmeyer and you haven't broken the gingival part of the contact. Tip number six, don't chase cracks. That crack is likely 25 to 50% deeper than you can see it. So the best is to leave it, restore it, and prepare the patient for a potential full cusper res restoration. Tip number eight, use a sectional matrix find one that fits and these are absolutely incredible for making an unbelievable contour and contact. Tip number nine, you try out, try using these plastic wedges. Their Garrison makes them, Paladent makes them, they are far superior than the wood ones. They don't break, they just bend as you can see there. And when they go in place, they stay, they don't wedge fall out. Absolutely amazing for getting that beautiful contact. Tip number 10, Use one of these sectional matrix rings. They're totally different types of sizes and they just are the icing on the cake that make an absolutely perfect contour. And what you might wanna do is burnish the matrix band to the adjacent tooth. I don't in this video, but that will just kind of make sure you have a perfect contact. So tip number 11, I think we're at 11. Uh, check the manufacturer's instructions for use. This is critical because what you were taught in school may not actually be the way that the company designed it to be used. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to use Clearfill SC. So we're going to elect to selectively etch the enamel for 15 seconds to increase the potential for better bonding of the bonding agent to the enamel. And as per the manufacturer's instruction for use, with Clearfill SC, the preparation may be dried extensively following the application of the primer, as compared to the wet bonding technique with most of the other bonding agent systems. So with the primer, we're going to apply for 20 seconds and you can either scrub it in or just leave it in and make sure it gets all over the preparation. Scrubbing increases the probability of it getting everywhere. And then we're gonna use mild airflow to dry the primer. Following primer application, we're gonna evenly distribute the bonding agent and we're gonna flow that everywhere, making sure that there are no puddles or pools of it, which decrease the strength of the bonding agent. Then we're gonna cure it. And then we're gonna start restoring this class two restoration. Now I personally use a flowable restoration, flowable composite and take my Explorer and move it into the corners. But honestly, based on the, the literature right now, there is no a very limited difference between using a packable composite, a flowable composite, any type of composite. I think the thing that's critical is to make sure that you follow the light exposure times and increment thickness as recommended by the resin manufacturer. So I asked around the clinic, uh, we've got a whole bunch of experienced 
providers and we all agree that the most important thing you can do at this stage is create that interproximal embrasure. That is critical. Take the time with an explorer before you cure it because trying to create that with uh, mechanical instruments is really difficult. And the composite that I use for this, it, we could cure two millimeter increments and it's a body shade and it took 20 seconds for cure. So now we're going to disassemble everything and we're going to finish light curing on the aproximal side, so the buccal and lingual. And then I'll take a scaler and remove any of the excess cure bonding agent. One of the greatest tips I ever learned for composites was taking this wild shaped number 12 surgical blade to remove any of the flash and help develop some of the inter interproximal contact. So normally you're gonna take your rubber dam off, but this is an extracted teeth put into to acrylic. So check your occlusion and then take your, adjust your occlusion, then take your finishing burrs and do complete your final finishing. Go easy with these flame finishing burrs. My gosh, it's easy to gouge the composite and then you're starting with scratch, you're back at scratch one. This is an enhanced polishing cup, usually needs a lot of water. And then the final touch, is you can do this as you can after you've completed everything is to etch the enamel and just finally seal the margin between the restoration and the tooth structure so i'm going to etch for 15 seconds air dry and then place my sealant i'll just flow it over the restoration here and actually you can see there's i mean this is an extracted tooth and there's a whole bunch of other restorations that need to be completed and if you had the literature now says that if you have an old restoration that doesn't have decay, you can actually seal it in as a mirror, my buddy was telling me just as we were cutting this video well. So cure it and then you have your finished restoration.